Okay, so here we are in Gamelon Lecture Part 2. Uh, we're going to start with Javanese Gamelon culture, um, and this is a f usually uh, permeated by Islam that includes some Hindu beliefs as well, and the stories from Hindu traditions are what really permeate the, uh, the dramas and the performances and form the, the narrative basis for it. There is, um, of course, a spiritual element to this that uh, is part of the arts in general and not just the music. Um, this is often described as uh, meditative music. It's soft. It's soft rhythmic sounds, again, in contrast with the more brass-oriented uh, Balinese gamelons. So pieces are long, 15, 30 minutes, um, and large gongs signal the beginning and the end of the piece. Um, we've already talked about the pairs of instruments, and then we're going to walk through the different instruments uh, that exist. Not all of them, but I've given you links to some of them so that you can get a sense of what they are and what they sound like. Um, a lot of the terminology here is valuable to know, but it's kind of beyond the scope of what we're doing. It's more in the realm of a 300 level course in Javanese and Balinese music. So that's why I'm skipping through a lot of this. The, for instance, knowing what a calatomic structure is, I think is important for us, but knowing that the silent beats in the Javanese tradition are called Wela, I don't think really helps us a lot. And here um, are examples of different 32, 16, and 64 beat calatomic structures um, showing what is stressed and what is not stressed. So there's a lot of stratification of the rhythm. There are layers upon layers of rhythm in a way that we just don't do in, in typical Western music. And here's a table showing typical relationships for a 32 beat form of the ladrang. So you'll see that one person plays one note every 32 beats, one plays one note every 16, one every eight. The people at the bottom of this chart really have to, this that most structural fundamental level, really have to pay attention because they're only hitting their gong once every 32 beats and that is really important because they are the foundation, um, not the little, the little subdivisions on top. So there's a stratification that's really uh, quite important. Um, here again is a way of showing motives in graphic form in the colotomic structure. Um, it's an interesting uh, view, but it's not something we're going to spend a lot of time on. That link will take you to an example of someone playing a 32-beat ladrang cycle. Um, in Bali, uh, music is used in all parts of culture, just as it is in most of these cultures. And this is primarily a Hindu region. And the gamelan here is a much more uh, exciting in many ways uh, performance. Lots of high energy stuff. Uh, the K-bar style is also very interesting where they start and stop. And there is a link later on, or maybe that was it, where they actually have what appear to us, the best way to explain it to us, would be a marching band version of a gamelan with steps and uh, vocal uh, exhortations, and it's really dramatic and exciting. If you can imagine a gamelan crossed with a marching band and perhaps um, stepping from the African-American tradition, um, that's what you get. It's a really exciting thing. Here's a nice general comparison between Balinese and Central Javanese. Um, uh, oh, here's the, the visually flashy. This is that thing I was talking about where it's exciting and dynamic and, and moving. So here are some more instruments. Again, after a point, it becomes terminology because we're going very quickly. This is a nice link to a mask dance in K-Bar, um, and it shows how the music is actually used. Like China, like Japan, they do use a lot of masks and puppets in these traditions, um, creating in a very clear and literal way of a, a, uh, a figure that's not an actor. The character is represented, not the actor. And this shows how interlocking patterns work uh, within a particular performance style. 
And then at the end, we start to find the fusion of Western elements into the music, creating something completely different than either the Western model or the, um, the Balinese original culture. These hybrid forms are really, I think, very, very interesting and a lot of fun. And like many of the pop music productions from Asia, they're very, very uh, high energy and uh, with lots of lights and colors and, and very dynamic and exciting pieces. Um, there's also, getting back to the very beginning of the first Gamelon video, there's this fascination by Western European composers and American composers with these timbres and the way that the rhythms interact in the Gamelon, and this is a reference to uh, especially the music of Lou Harrison. And that's it for Gamelon for now, and I'll see you later.